Today, I'm going to show you how to improve your backlit portraits using natural light. One thing I find that everyone seems to think when they're first starting out in photography is that when they're taking a portrait using nothing but natural light, you should always have the light source, the sun, shining directly onto your subject. And that kind of makes sense, right? Because you want your subject to be illuminated by the sun, otherwise they're just going to be dark and in shadow. Well, no, actually, that's kind of not true because, I mean, sure, that would work. It would mean that your subject's illuminated, of course, because they're in the sunlight, but you're also going to create a whole bunch of other problems that you're going to have to deal with. Firstly, if you're shooting on a bright, cloudless day where the sun is just beaming down, then asking your subject to face directly into the sun is going to give you really strong, harsh lighting. And with that, it means unflattering, hard shadows that are going to be cast across the face. And also, your model is going to naturally want to squint to protect their retina from being burnt out from the horrifyingly bright sunlight you've just asked them to face straight into you horrible horrible person. So what's the solution? Well if you haven't already guessed from the title of this video it's using a technique called backlighting which as the name suggests basically means placing the main light source in our case the sun directly behind the model and then exposing for their face which will be in a nice soft even shadow. This technique can be a real lifesaver when you're shooting out on location and there's no available shade to provide you with soft diffuse lighting. All you have to do is position your model with the back of their head towards the sun and watch as their face falls into soft shadow. Not that we get much sunshine in the UK, but when we do, I actually use this technique a hell of a lot. So let's talk about gear. What are you going to need? Well, personally, for me, I like to use prime lenses when I'm shooting portraits, as it allows me to shoot with a super wide aperture of like f1.4 or f1.8, and this is useful for two reasons. Firstly, the wide aperture will allow loads of light to enter the lens, meaning that you can expose for your model who will be cast into shadow, and that will mean that we don't have to bump up the ISO and risk creating noisy images. Second of all, the super shallow depth of field will create a nice thick blur in the background for lovely bokeh, and it also generates a bit of separation between the model and the rest of the scene, ensuring that the focus of the image is always on them. All of that said, that's just my personal preference, and technically speaking, you can use just about any combo of camera and lens with this technique. You can even use your smartphone if you want to. I mean, the key to nailing backlighting really isn't down to the equipment you have, but it's more about the way you use it and how you expose for your photo. To understand this a little bit better, we first need to talk a little bit about how your camera meters for light. Generally speaking, when you point your camera towards a scene, it will first look at all of the available light from the brightest areas to the darkest areas and basically everything in between. With this information, the camera will then tell you how under or overexposed your image is going to be using the current settings you have dialed in. Or if you're shooting on auto mode or you're using a smartphone, for example, it will adjust the camera settings automatically to what it thinks will give you a correctly exposed image. Now when you point your camera towards a really bright light source like the sun, your camera will tend to freak out a little bit because the difference in brightness between the brightest point, so the sun, and the shadow area will just be so great that it's impossible to expose for both areas. And generally speaking, most cameras will tend to prioritize the brighter areas over the darker ones if it's forced to choose. That's why you probably find that when you take a photo using your smartphone and you've got the sun behind you, it will tend to throw the subject into shadow. That's because it's using the brightest areas to expose for rather than the shadow areas. So in order for backlighting to work, it's important that you expose for your model's face rather than the background. Now this may mean that the background becomes overexposed and blown out, but in my opinion that's okay because the main focus of the image is your model. So ensuring that they are correctly exposed and the focus of the image is what's important here. If you're shooting in RAW, which I seriously hope you are by the way, then you'll have a good chance of being able to pull some of that detail back anyway in Photoshop or Lightroom just by using the highlight slider. If the thought of a blown out background is something that really, really bothers you, then you can always try and even out the exposure by using a reflector to bounce some of that natural light back onto the model's face, or you could use off-camera flash as a fill light. But that's a topic for another video. Today, we're just gonna focus on using nothing but natural light and your camera. Now we've talked about the theory about how it works, let's talk about camera settings. So let's assume for now that you're shooting on full manual mode. Don't freak out if you're not quite at the level of using manual mode just yet because after I explain this method I'm going to tell you about a much easier way that I actually use myself that hopefully you'll find a lot simpler. So when shooting in manual mode firstly we want to set the ISO as low as it can go to ensure the best quality results and this is typically ISO 100 or something like that. Next as we've already talked about we also want the aperture to be wide open so that it will let loads of light into the camera and also create a super shallow depth of field for subject separation. That just leaves us with shutter speed, which you'll just need to adjust in order to gain a correct exposure for your subject's face. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Personally, I don't actually shoot in manual mode that often. 
I know, right? People always harp on about how you should use manual mode, otherwise you're not a real photographer. But to that I say, bullshit. That's a rant I will say for another time. No, instead of manual mode, I actually use aperture priority mode. If you've never used aperture priority mode, it's shown as A or AV on your mode dial. And it's basically a semi-automatic shooting mode that allows you to control the aperture and the ISO whilst the camera takes care of the shutter speed for you. So why do I use this mode for backlighting? Well, we know that the ISO needs to be at 100 and the aperture needs to be wide open. So all that's left is the shutter speed, which when using aperture priority, the camera will take care of for me. It essentially frees me up to focus on the shoot at hand and getting the composition right and getting the model's poses right, rather than constantly fiddling around with the back of my camera as the light changes within the scene. If I decide that the camera is slightly over or underexposing the shot, then all I have to do is use the exposure compensation dial on the top of my camera to tell the camera to darken or brighten the shot by a stop or two either way. Because I shoot on a Sony a7 III, I'm quite lucky because the EVF and the rear screen show me the exposure of my image before I've even taken the shot, so I can tell immediately whether the shot is incorrectly exposed or not. The EVF and the rear screen on my camera are actually really useful when shooting directly into the CERN as it means that I'm not blinding myself like I would be if I was looking through the optical viewfinder on a DSLR for example. Typically I like to underexpose my backlit shots by around about a stop anyway. This is just in an attempt to retain as much of the background detail as I possibly can. Can. I then simply correct the brightness of the model's face in Lightroom by adjusting the shadow slider or by brightening the face using the adjustment brush. Remember it's a lot easier to rescue an underexposed shot than it is to rescue an overexposed shot. That's because once the detail in the bright areas has been way overexposed and burnt out, all of that data is generally lost for good. Anyway, that's about all there is to know about taking backlit portraits. Be sure to try it out for yourself and add this new skill to your toolbox because it's a super useful technique. If you're new to the channel and you've enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing because we create content like this every single week. So I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Don't smell very nice, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs>